This demo will show how to access an external database using the built-in functions from Indusoft App Studio. So first of all, I'm going to create a new database. In this particular example, I will use Microsoft Access 2007 to create the database. So I can go to new, define here a path for the file and a name for the file. Like for instance, db access functions.accdb. Okay, create. This is a new database. I do not have any tables, any data. So I can even close Microsoft Access. I do not need Microsoft Access anymore. I just need in the software studio to create the tables and execute any SQL command with the database. So in the soft, first of all, I will create a new project, a file new project. I can give any name to the project. In this example, I'll use DB access functions. And now under tasks, the first step is to create a connection to the external database. So under tasks, I can expand here external databases, right click on connections, click on insert. Here I define a name for the connection. This is just an alias for that particular connection and you will use this name as a handle for this connection when you configure the functions. So in my example, I will use the name db. And here under connection string, you can either write the connection string for the external database or browse for the pro providers using this wizard. And then Indusoft builds the connection string text for you. In this particular example, we are using the provider Microsoft Office 12.0 Access Database Engine because this is the provider for files created with Microsoft Access 2007. Next, here you can define the path and the name of the file, db access functions.accdb. Test the connection, Connect, connection succeeded, so the path and the name of the file is correct. Okay, okay. So under connections, I have one connection called db for that particular database. Then for our example, I will create a new screen. I will create here a button on the screen with the label, let's say, create table. And to execute an action when I click on the button, I will apply the command dynamic to this button. So I can write here a script to be executed when I click on this button. First of all, I will create a fun, uh, variable called SQL. And I will write here in this variable the SQL statement I want to execute. Like for instance, create table, let's say my table. In order to execute this SQL statement, all I have to do is to type here dollar sign where I can see all the built-in functions from Indusoft. And there is one built-in built functions called db execute, where the first argument is the connection name, in our case db, and the second argument is the SQL statement, in this case the value of the variable SQL. Okay, I can save this screen, for instance, as main run the application. When I click this button, Indosoft executes the SQL statement and if I open the Microsoft Access program again and open that particular file, db access functions, Indosoft created the table, my table. But this table is a table with no fields, there are no columns in this table. So back to Windows Software Studio, I can change my SQL statement to define the fields for this table. Like for instance, C1, which is an integer, and C2, which can be an alphanumeric value with up to 32 characters. So notice that in this SQL variable, I have a string which is the SQL statement that I want to execute using the db execute function from Indusoft.
So Windowsoft is able to execute any SQL statement just by using the DB execute function. So, okay, I can save it. During the runtime, I can click on this button to execute the command again. By the way, let me delete the fun the previous table. And now I have a table with the columns C1 and C2. Now, if I want to insert data into this database, I can copy this button, change here the label to insert data. And here in command, instead of executing the command create table, I can create the SQL statement, insert into my table values. The first value is a numeric value, for instance, 100. The second value is an alphanumeric value. So I write it between single quotes, for instance, ABC. And here the function db execute to execute this command. Save it. When I click on the button, Indosoft must execute the command. And if I go back to Microsoft Access and open this table, I have the values there, 100 and ABC. If I click again on the button, let's say a second time, a third time, a fourth time, a fifth time, each time I click on this button, I execute that command and I keep inserting data to the table. In many cases, you will want to insert in the table values from tags, not fixed values like those. So you can very easily concatenate tag values to your SQL statement. So in this case here, instead of uh, 100, I can concatenate to this string here, the value of the tag second. So my string begins here with the double quotes, finishes here, and then I use the concatenation character I concatenate the value of the tag second, could be any other tag, and concatenate the rest of the string. For instance, here, if I want to concatenate a string tag, I can concatenate, for instance, the value of the internal tag time. And after creating the string, I execute the function to actually execute the command. Save it, click here, insert data. And when I go back to my function, to my table, I have here the value 59, which was the value of the tag second, and 163559, which was the current value of the tag time. And just like before, every time that I click on this button, I execute this function again with the current value of the tag seconds in the current value of the tag time. And using the DB execu execute function, I can execute any SQL statement, not only insert. For instance, if I want to update data, so let's change here the caption to update data. Here in command, I can change my command to update my table set for instance, C1 equal to 200, where C2 equals to ABC. So the whole string between double quotes and in the SQL statement for Microsoft Access, string values are between single quotes. So this command here will update the values in the column one with the value 200 in all the registers where the value of the column 2 is ABC. Let's save it, execute it. Now if I open the table, all the registers where the value of the column 2 is ABC had the value of the column C1 updated to 200. Other common command is the delete. So I can copy this button here Right here the caption delete data and under command I can change this command to 
delete from my table where column 2 is equal to ABC. So all the records where the column 2 has the value ABC will be deleted. So I save it, execute the function, and when I go back to the database, you can see that all the records where the value of the column 2 was ABC were deleted. So in a nutshell, that's how you can use the db execute function to execute any SQL statement. Delete, update, insert, create table, or any other valid SQL statement. Uh, to finalize, one very common SQL statement is the select statement to bring data from the database. So I can create another button here with the label select data. And the command here is different. The db execute function is used to execute a command to the database. But in this particular case, I do not want only to execute a command. I want to bring data from the database. So there are different functions I can use to do that. I can use, uh, I will create some variables here like SQL, numcur, numrows, and row. So first in SQL, I define the SQL statement to select data. Like for instance, select everything from my table. Then to execute this SQL statement, I use the function db cursor open SQL, where the first argument is the connection name, in our case db, and the second argument is the SQL statement, in this case the value of the variable SQL. And this function returns an integer value that I'm uh, storing here in this variable called numcur, which is pretty much a handle for the data set created in memory with the values retrieved from the database. Very important, after executing the db cursor open SQL function, you must execute the db cursor close to release the data in memory. If you just keep executing the db cursor open SQL function and never close the connection, you will end up with a memory leaking issue because Indosoft uh, will, not, will keep allocating memory for the data that we are reading from the database and Indosoft keeps this data available for you until you close the connection using the db cursor close function with the value returned by the db cursor open function. Okay, so this function creates the, uh, selects the data from the database and keeps the data in memory. Now, how to access this information? There are many functions in Indosoft to manipulate the information retrieved from the database. Like for instance, the function db cursor row count, where I define the cursor number, returns the number of rows returned by the database. And I can store that in a variable, like for instance, num rows equals to db cursor row count. If I know how many rows are in the database, I can create a loop, in this case, for row equals to one to num rows, next. And in this loop, I'll create another variable here, let's say txt. I'll make txt is equal to the previous value of txt and the function db cursor get value, which is a function used to read a value from the database, from, from a specific column in the database. From this cursor, from the column, let's say c1. If I want the values from the column c2, I can make txt and let's say comma and the same function but retrieving values from the column c2 and then vb can return line feed to jump to the next line. Finally, 
For each interaction, I execute the function db cursor next to go to the next record. And I keep doing, uh, concatenating the values of txt for each one of the rows in the data set. Finally, at the end of the script, I can message box the value of the tag txt. And it's pretty much done. Save it. When I click here, Indosoft queries the data from the database and displays this information here in this message box. And this is just a quick example. Uh, in your real application, you can use tags uh, to receive the values from the database, use those tags to write values to PLCs or to any other device, and create your uh, logic for your specific real-world application. Uh, one last tip, here in the output window, you can right-click, go to settings, and enable the option database messages. And this option is extremely useful when you are troubleshooting the application. So if you enable this option here, database messages, whenever you execute a database command and there is an error, Indosoft writes here the description of the error. For example, if I write here uh, an invalid command in my function, like insert and uh, AAA, it's an invalid command. There is not a command called insert AAA. So during the runtime, if I click here, Indosoft plots here an error, invalid SQL statement, and you can read here the message and find out what was the error. Here, the insert AAA is an invalid uh, statement. So I can fix it, save it, right click here to delete the messages from the output window and now if I click on the button I do not have any error because the command was successfully uh, executed. So I hope this presentation was useful for you and thank you for watching.